Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Today, I am joined by Lindsay, and we are talking all about Facebook groups and how to really leverage those Facebook groups to move those followers, to move those in that group into paying clients. And I'll tell you what, this is really key to growing a business, and Lindsay has mastered this. So with that being said, Lindsay, I'm so excited to have you here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yes, absolutely. So tell us more about yourself, who you are, what you do, and how in the world did you end up here? Yeah, I am over in Arizona, first and foremost. I have twins, twin boys, and I'm married, and we are originally from Chicago. We moved here about mm, almost eight years ago, but my story starts back in Chicago where I was doing the nine to five thing. And I was, I went to college, got the degree, did the thing. And I thought I was supposed to climb a corporate ladder. I had this vision. It's, it's, it's funny because I have this vision of like, how could I get to the CEO position or how could I get to a high level what could I do to climb to a high level? And um, that was not going the way I wanted it to go at all. I was in this somewhat of a toxic environment where I never knew what I was driving into each morning. My commute was two hours in Chicago. You never know how much longer that can become um, with weather, with ice, with snow. And I remember just thinking to myself, like, there's got to be something better I didn't have kids yet at the time. And I was just like, I mean, I'm not getting home till six or seven o'clock at night. How do I take them to practice? How do I, how do I do school stuff? Like, like, how am I going to do this with this kind of a lifestyle? This makes zero sense to me. So um, that actually, they had to move the company to Ohio um, and they were like, you know, do you want to come with us? And I was like, no, don't. It was a very bittersweet moment of me, like having no idea what was going to come next, but also was so relieved to walk away and let that go because it was so stressful for me. So fast forward and I'm on Facebook (laughs) and I see this, um, post about, um, or it started with a message and then it, then it turned to a post. It was a message. It was one of those messages that you get where they're like, you should join my team and here's all the links. And it's big, it's big, long, like novel message. And you're like, what? No, thank you. I'm going to run the other way. And I remember thinking this has to be like some kind of robotic message, but I was like, I'm still going to follow along and, you know, maybe I'll respond. And something told me to just kind of figure out if this is a real human on the other side, because it was all very new back then. And um, so I followed and she kept telling the story about how she was home working on this business online. And she was, um, able, she was getting paid and they were getting the kids and her were getting ready to go shopping. And she kept painting this picture of this vision that I believe that I really, really wanted. And so week after week, after week, after week, same story was being posted and being told. And I was like, is, you know, I I just couldn't figure out if this was real or not. You know, those skeptical thoughts we have, like, uh, is this like, like, this looks too big and good to be true. And so we were having conversation behind the scenes, she was talking to me about, um, how great I would be and how I should do this. And I watched her for eight long months before I was like, okay, I think I could do what you're doing. So I signed up, got involved in network marketing. That was my, uh, April of 2011. I signed up and then I said, all right, tell me what I need to do. Like, I, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. And so I got the dreaded send the messages, you know, guide. 
And I was like, oh, okay. Send messages. Okay. Okay. And um, I just remember thinking to myself, like, okay, I need to get the word out. People need to know if I really want to build this thing. If I really want to make sales, people need to know. And I can make a post, which is great. Um, but what, how did that build like a full on business? What does that look like? And there was no real guide other than send these messages. And I already knew what the message looked like. Cause I had gotten it. So I set up a Facebook group and I decided I would reach out and talk to people about this community. I was building, I would reach out and I would talk to people about this space. They can come and get motivated and they can get recipes and they can get tips and they can you know, share whatever they're going through. And I would be there to support them. And it was a free space. It was branded in a way that was spoke, you know, I branded it around what was important to me, what my mission was. And I really just focused on growing that community. So through doing that, I started signing up customers and team members and my team members were able to really kind of follow that method. And years into this, I hit crazy levels of all these like accolades and goals. And I ended up giving birth to my twins um, after a serious bed rest. And when I was in this moment <laughs> of giving birth, um, they were born in January. And that's where they like celebrate all the, you know, past year success. And I had hit the 50th spot in the whole company. And I remember thinking like, you know, like I've been on bed rest. I'm just giving birth to these twins. Like what, what does this even mean? I had no idea what I was like fully doing yet. Um, other than I had built this community and I was able to bring people through it. And my team was able to follow this method. So we saw a lot of success with, you know, I was able to have, I had my twins and my team, they knew what to do. They had a process and a method. They were often doing their thing and it was so nice. And so um, I then went on to see what I could do more. Like, how could I get to that next level? And a business coach reached out or what I re we got together. We had a conversation and I remember her asking me like, okay, but what have you done? Like, what are you doing? Because you're doing something and it's working. And I don't know that I want to change any of this. Like, what are you doing? And she's like, all these things you're hitting, all these numbers, like, this is a big deal. And I was like, oh, well, I put together a community and I teach people how to do that on my team. And I let them, you know, I make, have them make it their own and they're able to bring customers and teammates and all that through the community. And she was like, and why are you not teaching this to everyone? Um, <laughs> and I was like, I, I really was in this space of like, I have nothing of value to share, um, to help business owners at the time. Like they, you know, they had asked me to speak on uh, corporate type of calls and things like that. And I just was like, I don't have nothing. I have nothing to give. <laughs> um, and she helped me realize and see, like, I actually had a lot to give. I had a lot of knowledge from my experience to share. So there, I still, I started to teach like uh, leader teams and do calls and stuff like that and started to teach this method to people. And I will tell you, um, it wasn't until May of this year that I put the method into a course and started to expand outside of my team and coach others. And even more so, which has been really cool at first, it was all about coaching network marketers, but um, in creating a community for these people, I have found as a coach that even online coaches and course creators can create a community just like I've done and see. Um, success through it. So here we oh, are. So, so good. And so many of the things you just said really hit home. You know, how many of us are going through the motions in our lives, just going to the nine to five, we feel stuck. We're working hours that we don't love. We're on these long commutes. We're just merely existing. Yeah. But we all had an event happen. That's kind of that pivotal turning point. And at the time it's hard. And it's scary as heck when you're going through it. But looking back, it's like the best thing ever. It all makes sense looking back. And I think that sharing our journeys, which I appreciate you sharing your journey, it shows others that, you know what, it's okay. It's okay to change your mind. It's okay that you 
are questioning everything and have no clue what you're doing at the time, but you're just trusting and you're just moving forward. Like, okay, you know what? I've been watching this girl for eight months. It looks really cool. Why not just go for it? And that's the thing I think we forget so often as business owners is that there's people watching us that we have no idea are watching us that may be buying, you know, six, eight, 10 months after they've come into our world. But yeah, just really building those relationships, authentically building those relationships is so key. You know, when when you get those DMs that are like, hey girl, hey, it's like, oh gosh, are we still really doing this? Or you know, the ones on LinkedIn where it's like an immediate pitch. It's like, no, oh, it yeah. takes time to build that relationship with others. And I think in the online space, we're so used to instant gratification. You know, we need information, we Google it, we get an answer. But business doesn't work that way. It takes nurturing, it takes building that community. And that's where you've truly excelled. In your Facebook groups, you haven't just built a container. And I think that's what a lot of coaches do, is they build these containers. And they're like, okay, I have a Facebook group, but nothing really happens with it. But what you've done is you've taken that group and really fostered community. You've created a community and taught now your team how to create community. So how were you able to do that? How were you able to go just from a container to a community? So I really love encouragement. And I think that in just that tiny piece where it was like step one is I, it was a mission for me to encourage um, these women and cheer them on. And I think we're in, well, we've been in, this isn't anything new. We're in a space where people want to be seen. They want to be heard. They want to you know, they crave community and there are, um, there is a space where people will do that in person and a space where they're going to do it online. And so in my position, I created that online and, um, I just wanted to know who these people were that were joining. And so I would spend time getting to know them, as if I was going to a coffee shop with them um, virtually. And I just, I don't know if it was a natural thing that just flowed through me, you know, cause it wasn't, nobody told me to do that. Um, they just told me to message people and ask questions, you know? And um, I just started to connect with them both publicly or not publicly, but in the community and privately. I would connect with them and they, you know, through doing that, they were able to realize like, oh, wow, she really isn't like, she's a human. She's, (laughs) she's awesome. She, I know it could look like if I actually purchased from her, because I, I did have um, a goal in mind that they would get a feel for what it would be like if they became an actual client this is what a part like this, I call it the appetizer, the appetizer to the dinner and the dessert. If you were to become a client of mine. So, and I did do that through, I will say um, one of my strategies that um, I used, which was innovative over time. This wasn't just right out the gate. I, I, what I certainly evolved as I built this method out, um, but it was creating events and or challenges that were very specific not the typical, there's a lot of vague, broad challenges out there that you'll see people like, we're going to do a free, you know, five day drink water or whatever. And it's like, great, but that doesn't move somebody to want to work with you there. You're just helping them drink. So I really understood that's not worth my time. Let's, you know, and I, I'm sure I maybe did it once or twice long time ago, just kind of figuring the things out. But I've realized like, no, 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 we need to actually be real custom about this and really focus in on what comes on the back end of the event, what comes on the back end of that, that would encourage them to really want to purchase, to want to move to the next level. So those 
those are my. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes total sense because at the core of it, you know, we all are craving that community. It's that primal need. We're built to belong. We want to be accepted. We want to belong. And when you're really clear on what those core like mission and values and vision for your community are, it gets a lot easier. And then you touched upon something else, which is engagement. You just talk to people. And that's where I think so many business owners, we forget, we forget to engage with the people that are already in our community. We're so worried about chasing the next shiny object that we forget that there's people on the other side of it. I know so often I've connected with people in the DMs over, you know what, I love your shirt or you're kayaking and that lake looks gorgeous. Where are you at? Yeah. I'm not going in there like, hey, buy my services. Hey, you need to join this. You need to join it. I'm just genuinely getting to know them because it's a two way street. I'm yeah. not going to be for everyone. Right. And I know that every client out there is not a good fit for me. So again, this mm -hmm. isn't rocket science. It's building relationships because we're working with humans. You know, yeah. I'm human, you're human. And I love how you shared your direct message experience. Like, I just want to know if this is real or if this is <laughs> a bot. Like, that's so cool. But you got curious. You got curious and really like dove in and look what you've built from that experience. I know. I think about that. I think about the groups too. I'm like, what would have happened if I did not create this? Like, where would I be right now? crazy to think about like how creating a community really does. I always say creating a community and content will create the conversations, which will create the conversions. Right. And it's really important for people to like note because there is, um, to me, there's definitely a uh, noise out there that they, it's like, some people forget to tell you they built a network, they've built a community where they're like, we're just posting things and people are showing up. And it's like, mm, to an extent, yes, some are going to be attracted in, but I would have never, I, I never liked, I never commented on her stuff. I not, none of it. I just watched. And I, it's funny that you're talking about that because I actually just went live in my community today to say like, Hey, if you're frustrated that you're not seeing these metrics of likes and comments, like they're still watching you. So don't stop. Don't slow down. There's, there's so many people that were watching that were never engaging in anything I ever did that all of a sudden would show up. So it's so, uh, it's so funny that you brought that up. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, we're always seeking that external validation. Like we want to get those likes, comments, shares, all those metrics that make us feel warm and fuzzy. But you just, like you said, yeah. you just have to keep showing up over and over and over and really just detaching from the outcome. Like there's going to be things that you put so much time and energy into that flop. I think it's safe to say that every single one of us has had a silent launch at one point or another, but that yeah. means nothing about you. It's just data. What you can do is learn from that launch and use that knowledge to make then the next one even better. Honestly, for me, yeah. every single time I've had a silent launch, my like next launch has been like the most successful then. It's yeah. so crazy how, you know, you just take that step back, look at where the gaps were and fill them. It's really not as complicated as we're making it out to be. So shifting gears here a little bit, what are some of the most frequent mistakes that you see your clients making when they're starting a Facebook group and trying to build community? Well, the first mistake before we even get into that piece of it is they believe that their current group, which is typically a sales and info group is the community. Um, and so it's first and foremost is like, what even is a community? What does it look like? What should it look like? And um, it's not these sales groups. Um, they serve a purpose. I'm not saying you shouldn't use them. They are like a place holder for when people do want information for people, when people are interested, when they are ready, then yeah, sure. Let's bring them in and you can have all your information for people and it can do the, the talking for you. But to take somebody who's you just met on wherever social in person 
wherever you meet them and invite them into a community that's like, this is on sale, that's on sale, here's this product, here's that product. No. So that's the first mistake is that is not a community. That is a sales and information group, not a community. A community that you want to create is going to be based around what you, what do you want to talk about? And then to expand on that, if they do, if they have, you know, as you launch this community, um, you also need to be careful and mindful of the content you are sharing in there. And what I mean by, and I don't mean like overthink it or it needs to be perfect. No, what I mean is be a human in there because you could be creating a real community where it's not that type of info group, but all you're doing is talking about your products, 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 products. And the other thing I find is they will name their group with the company name. And we don't want to do that because Facebook don't, doesn't like that. So because people can actually search the title of your community. And so you want to be thoughtful about like who um, is out there that could be searching for information. For example, I have someone I work with who it's really important that she shares about gut health and then she has her products but she she also has like a coaching she has two different things going on we've got some products with network marketing and we've got a coaching business and so she was like nothing's happening over here and the group was like named like something vibes health, happy vibes healthy vibes and I'm like what does that even mean how does someone know your what they're getting in that group if that's all we're naming it and I'm like, people search. And if someone's to search gut health, your group's not going to pop up because it says healthy vibes or happy vibes. And um, so that's a big mistake a lot of people make is they'll call it their green compass group, or they'll call it their um, sensi squad type of group. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Pull that out brand it to what you want it to be because Facebook doesn't let you um, search those for whatever reason, it doesn't like populate. And so you want to get creative with your name. And so I help people work on that because then they'll, they'll feel like, what should I call it? <laughs> That's such great advice because people forget that that is searchable. You want to be naming your group something that people are searching for. And this doesn't even just go for Facebook groups. Like if you're starting a podcast, the same thing applies. When you're putting content out, the same thing applies. Even your main headline on Instagram has SEO keywords in it. So really make sure you're doing your research. I love, love, love that piece of advice because it's so blatantly obvious yet so frequently forgotten. So forgotten. Now, I think before we wrap up here, it's important to touch upon that, you know, you've been in this since 2011. Yeah. Growth takes time. Mm -hmm. This wasn't just, okay, I quit my nine to five. The next day I woke up a millionaire. I think it's so important to let people know that fostering a true community isn't just an overnight process. It's going to take a lot of intentional engagement. What's your take on that? Yeah, the, my take is I took eight months to say yes. And then I was um, in it and running right out the gate. Um, really just figuring some, you know, strategies out in the beginning and just took off and ran with my first business. And it's funny, I'm doing the same thing while I'm out here teaching people how to grow their Facebook group communities. Um, but there's a time process in it, which I know all of us, to be honest, don't like it. We, we want people to get it and sign up today. Um, and there's, we just have to, there's a point of, I feel like patience, um, but also perseverance, like continuing to trust and show up and really look at, um, are you connecting with people? Are you nurturing these people? Are you building 
something, which is why it's important for me to have the community um, to build and connect. Otherwise, for me, my, I just think about like getting lost in so many messages. Um, and there's something to be said about bringing your message to one space, one group, and really just being able to expand and have conversations beyond that. But all of this, you know, we have to remember like the questions that these people are asking themselves, which I asked as well is like, is this going to work for me? It's working for you. But it, if I, and, and I, I still sometimes will do this when I'm looking for, you know, the next coach to work with or something like that. And I'm like, I'm about to spend money. Is this going to work for me? Am I going to be able to, um, you know, bring a return from this? And I think like, you know, a newer person who's maybe just getting involved has no idea. They're not, they might not even be thinking that way just yet, but it's, we have to just remember the big question they're asking is, is this going to work for me? Like it's worked for you. And so when you think about that message, you want to put out there, you want to show them that you will be able to guide them in whatever you're offering and that'll help them. But they're still going to be like, great for you. Um, and it's going to take some time before they're really like, okay, I think this, I, I'm going to, this is going to work for me. Right. And honestly, it comes back to them making that decision, which we have no control over. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's hard. Not having the control over when they're going to be ready to buy. But again, it's just such a testament to showing up continuing to stay the course, taking that consistent action and not giving up. Lindsay, this was such a great conversation. Where can we learn more about you and your services? Yeah, well, I have a Facebook group. <laughs> I can share the link um, where I work with online um, business owners, course creators, coaches, network marketers, in showing you different tips for monetizing your Facebook group. I also am on Instagram, even though I love my Facebook groups, um, at Lindsay Weiss official, and I'm spelled differently. I'm spelled L Y N D S I. Um, and then I can also give you, I have a free guide for increasing engagement in your Facebook group that I can hand over if they're interested in just kind of reviewing what that looks like. Absolutely amazing. Everything will be linked up in the show notes. So be sure to check those out, get into Lindsay's world. And Lindsay, thank you so much for being here today and sharing Thanks your wisdom. Yes, absolutely. And until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode.